Welcome to the Learning Zone. This is Mr. B. In this video, I will explain how neutral atoms will undergo either oxidation or reduction to form stable ions. During the oxidation process, an atom will lose one or more of its electrons. During the reduction process, an atom will gain one or more electrons. But the question becomes, which atoms will lose electrons and which atoms will gain electrons? And the answer lies on the periodic table. Where on the periodic table, the metallic elements are written on the left side and the non-metallic elements are written on the right side. The ability to lose or gain electrons is directly related to an element's electronegativity where as a trend, the electronegativity of the elements will decrease from the right to the left side and down. Consider the element fluorine, whose electronegativity value is 3.98, compared to the electronegativity value for the element lithium, which is 0 0.98. Lithium will tend to undergo oxidation because of its low electronegativity value, and fluorine will tend to undergo reduction. Another important point to be made about oxidation and reduction is that after the oxidation process, the resulting positively charged ion, known as a cation, will have a smaller radius than the original atom. In this example, the lithium atom has a radius of 1.23 angstroms. The lithium ion has a radius of 0.68 angstroms. During the reduction process, where electrons are gained, the resulting anion will have a larger radius than the original atom. In this example, the nitrogen atom has a radius of 0.70 angstroms, and the nitrogen anion has a radius of 1.71 angstroms. Now consider the element sodium, whose Bohr model contains 11 protons and 12 neutrons, three electron shells with an electron configuration of 281. In the presence of the proper oxidizing agent, which is a substance that will accept electrons from another substance, the sodium atom will transfer its lone valence electron to the oxidizing agent, resulting in the formation of a positively charged ion called a cation. Because the valence electron of the sodium atom has been transferred, the resulting radius of the cation will be smaller than the radius of the atom. The cation possesses 10 electrons and 11 protons. Therefore, the charge of the cation will be plus 1. The cation is placed within brackets and the charge is written outside of the brackets where the charge of an ion will now be called the oxidation number. Now let's consider the element chlorine whose Bohr model contains 17 protons and 18 neutrons in its nucleus three electron shells with an electron configuration of 287. In the presence of a reducing agent, the chlorine atom will accept an electron. To produce the chloride ion, specifically the chloride anion, the anion still contains 17 protons and 18 neutrons in its nucleus. It still contains three electron shells. However, the new electron configuration will be 288. The extra electron will give the chloride ion a negative charge, since now we have 18 electrons and 17 protons. The anion is now placed within brackets and the charge is written outside of the brackets, where the negative charge is also called the oxidation number. The process may also be demonstrated using Lewis dot symbols. For example, the Lewis dot symbol for the element sodium is simply Na and one dot. 
after the oxidation process, the sodium ion is created, where the ion is written as simply Na, no dots, where the Na is placed within brackets, and the oxidation number is placed outside of the brackets. For the chlorine atom, the Lewis dot symbol for chlorine will be Cl and seven dots. After the reduction process, the chloride ion will possess eight dots. So we write Cl with eight dots placed in brackets with the oxidation number, which is minus one placed outside of the brackets. What would happen if the positively charged sodium cation and the negatively charged chloride anion were brought into close proximity. Then the electrostatic attraction between the two oppositely charged particles will cause the particles to come together to produce a molecule of sodium chloride. This represents the proper Lewis structure for the sodium chloride molecule. And when writing the chemical formula for sodium chloride, we simply write Na. See ya. This concludes my explanation of ion formation. Hopefully this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.